It's a brilliant breakdown. Quickly as well, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch, your level of concern with the neck? High. Very high. Extremely high. Like that doesn't, that's, that's, that's all in water. Linebacker and neck injury, that's all he does. Like literally, he's leading with his neck head every time he makes a tackle. If he's doing it right, if he's doing it right, the head across the bow, neck right, head across the bow, um, all this is exposed. I'm taking a block on. You're taught to take a block on with your face. That's, that's all this, the neck, everything. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. And, 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 and if, if, to me, I say the same thing about Tyron Smith. Knees and back for tackles, it's all in water. They don't mix. They don't go well together. I don't care how many surgeries you have. I don't care how many surgeries you have. You find a person, you find one person on this earth has had back surgery and said, my back has gotten better. Better. Not that it's not hurting anymore. That it's actually gotten better. No backs get better. No necks get better. Not playing football, it doesn't. Because now all you're doing is that constant pounding every single down. Like, you don't get away from that. How do you get away from that? You don't. I don't care what position you move him to. You can change. You can, you can do musical chairs all you want. But, but he's playing Will. He's playing Sam. He's playing Mike. He's. I don't care about any of that. At some point in time, a linebacker, why we pay you is to make tackles. And if you're having a hard time making tackles because you are worried about your neck, it's it's it's. I don't want I don't want to sound I don't want to be Debbie Downer, right? But I'm just going to be real with you. It's not a situation of of if it's going to happen. It's for Nathan Vanner. It's going to be it's going to be when. That that win kind of situation. Yeah, you just don't you just don't. It's just linebacker and necks don't. It's it's oil and water. Um. It, you think you brought up a fascinating point as well with Tyron Smith, and I, I think it might be a, a, a hidden point of discussion in the Cowboys' offseason is if, if is how much time does he have left, and if he goes down again, could that derail your whole season? Because this, this is this is you know this is one of the most important. I mean, you've already lost your center as well, right? This is your most important offensive lineman still, probably, right? Other than Zach, right? Right. No, left tackle uh, for a quarterback yeah, is absolutely yeah. right-handed quarterback. So, so I mean. Could, could the Cowboys' season be derailed by, by, by something like that, you think? Yes and no. And I would say if we were under the old regime, yes. I would say under the new regime, because it, here's the thing, and this is one of the things that kind of upset me about Cowboys' fan base. They want everybody to be the Pro Bowl guy. And you look across the league, there's a lot of teams who have success in winning seasons, 9, 10, 11, 12 win seasons, and they don't have all pros across the offensive line. What we had here in Dallas, that ain't normal. That ain't normal to have three all pros. That ain't normal to have essentially four first-round picks across the front. That ain't, that's not normal. That don't happen. You may have one or two, you know, your left tackle being, you know, one of the highest paid ones. That ain't normal. We were spoiled. We were spoiled to have four Four first round picks potentially, um, at least first round you know talents, that don't happen, and I think so much was put on that. And offensive line is like defensive back. Okay, you're not going down to your local Home Depot and finding them just on the shelf. That's why people say go find. No, there's not there's not a bunch of offensive linemen laying around because teams grab them up. Even if they don't play, they grab them up because they understand if one goes down, how important it is to have another guy who's serviceable to go in that position. I think what they've done now is they brought in some guys who are able to be interchangeable, right? And, and, and now being able to have guys playing different positions and in the event that one goes down, they have a guy who can slide in there and be, I'm not gonna be Tyron Smith. It's not gonna be him, but it ain't what we saw in Atlanta a couple of years ago, right? It's something that we can still manage uh, and still be able to go out there and be successful. Uh, because Tyron Smith, if you look at it the last couple of seasons, you can almost bank he's going to miss two to three games, right? Put that in, put that in there. Put that Tyron Smith going to miss two or three games this year. He's had the last couple of years. Those, those, aren't, those are trends. And as you get older and the more wear and tear, more miles in your body, those trends don't go away. You don't all of a sudden, and I love when people say this, I'm feeling the best I felt in my life, right? I said to you when I first got here, that's a lie. That's a lie. You don't feel better as you're doing this thing. You're literally taking your body through the torment and punishment of being a National Football League player. You don't get better. You don't get better. It doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. You manage the pain. You're able to hold on to it a little bit longer, but you're not getting better. 
and for you know Tyron's not getting better. Um, he's had a hell of a career. Will probably one day put on a yellow jacket, but the thing with that is he's missed two to three games in the last couple of years. It'll probably happen the same way this year. But I do think with this new regime, they found enough pieces to where they can kind of switch guys around and still be productive.